Well, it's just a totally different medium for interacting with other people and, you know, musically. You're synthesizing your own sounds, so you're not essentially being trapped to using these pre-made sounds. The whole idea of using computer to generate music is really cool. And because um, I've always wanted to do something really creative and expressive, and but since I'm an econ major, I never really got the chance to do that. All of us are finding that you know this is this is not something that just happens easily. It's a new instrument in a sense. This is the sound of the oldest piano in the world. In the 1700s, this early piano was the latest thing in musical technology and changed the way composers composed. In the 1950s and 60s, prominent 20th century composer Milton Babbitt used this RCA sound synthesizer at Princeton to create complex, highly controlled music that would not have been possible by any other means. Instrument makers have always opened up new possibilities for composers. These days, the Princeton University Laptop Orchestra, which calls itself Polork for short, is giving composers a whole new way to create music. The 15-piece ensemble, comprised of advanced Princeton music and computer students, processes sounds in real time, right from their laptop computers. The orchestra is the brainchild of Princeton University professors Dan Truman and Perry Cook. People do laptop music for many years now since we've had laptops, but typically in groups of one or two, because one thing the computer allows you to do is make a lot of noise automatically. But um, the laptop orchestra experiment is more about putting it back into an, a more intimate space where a person's controlling some amount of sound, and the sound is coming from them. And so if you look at the layout of the laptop orchestra, each player is sitting with a laptop, a little rack, and a speaker. And their sound comes out of that speaker. And so it's more instrumental, in a way. Uh, more in the standard mold of an orchestra where each player has some kind of object that makes sound. Composers are lining up to collaborate with Plork, and each has had to invent his or her own unique way to use the orchestra. The possibilities are endless. Plork uses networked laptops, specially designed multi-directional speakers, and a new programming language invented by Princeton grad student Ga Wong called Chuck. First and foremost thing is that Chuck gives you exact control over time. So if you were running Microsoft Word or something and said, save this file, it just does it as fast as it can and it comes back. Well, that's not musical. So if you wanted to save the file three quarter notes from now, <laughs> you know, which is important in sound. You want the sound to happen when you want it to happen. So Chuck, one, um, gives over, overriding uh, reverence to time and your con the ability of the programmer to control when things happen. Um, the other thing is, is that the audio engine runs all the time and you can put code into it and see what it sounds like and pull it back out and change it and put it back in, piece by piece. Brad Garten has written a piece called Idle Swamp. One of my favorite things to do in New Jersey is to sit out in the back of my house and listen to bugs and frogs. And what I did with the laptop orchestra was turn all the performers into bugs and frogs, essentially. <laughs> How did you do that? Well, it's, I'm using a synthesis technique that takes the human voice and it can transform it. And I can take your voice and make you kind of go like a frog or like a cricket or something like that. Composer Paul Lansky, who studied with Milton Babbitt at Princeton, has taken a completely different approach with Plork. I worked with four students. What they were basically doing was reacting to the environment. So we said, you know, I said, like, for the first minute of this piece, don't do anything. Then, after a minute, start to trigger these little events and see what happens. I did things where if you just click on a, on a button or something like that, you get a flurry of notes. So being able to control that and being able to make chamber music, as it were, is a real challenge.
And Plork co-founder Dan Truman has used the orchestra in still another completely different way in his music for the legendary Indian tabla player Zakir Hussain. There are these conductors who are t you know, sending them sign language to tell them which pattern to play. And then one of the other conductors <laughs> was playing this tune and this bass line on a keyboard. And over the wireless network that connects all these laptops, the pitches that he was playing was being communicated to all the laptops. And those pitches were controlling filters through which their voices were going. And so they would speak and they would hear their voice get kind of transformed into this tune that was kind of the, the basis for the whole piece. And then with their hands, they were actually controlling this kind of drone, this pitched uh, drone that came in periodically. just playing by myself so there was just a natural tone of the instrument and then suddenly I, look, I looked at my colleagues and then they started to intervene a little bit and at that point the instrument started to morph into being something else altogether and, and the identity changed and it was like seeing the, the, the bottle open and the genie come out and, 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 and the instrument started to sound like voices, it started to sound like uh, ether tones, it, it was like flying. I've gotten a lot of interest from composers who work primarily with acoustic instruments. Who would really like to give this a try. So. And I think performers like Zakir, mm -hmm. who, who are interested in being processed or reaching out and extending yeah. themselves, would, would find this really interesting. My fondest hope, like Perry was saying, would be that these kinds of instruments, with these speakers and so on, would proliferate and be everywhere. Mm -hmm.